Okay, so we know that the way to find the y-intercept from a table is to look for when x equals 0 and look at your y-value. And your y-value when x equals 0 is your y-intercept. But what happens if when you're looking at the table, x equals 0 is not in the table? That's what we're going to learn how to do today. So the first thing I'm going to do, or the first step, is to find my rate of change for the rest of the table. So I'm going to look at my change in y. My y goes from 6 to 8, so it's increasing by 2. 8 to 10, increasing by 2. 10 to 12, increasing by 2. And 12 to 14, increasing by 2. Now I'm going to look at my change in x. From 1 to 2, I'm going up by 1. 2 to 3, up by 1. 3 to 4, up by 1, and 4 to 5, up by 1. Now, in order to get x equals 0, which is what I need, I'm going to go back from the 1, backwards 1, so that I have a 0. Because now I still have that increase of, from 0 to 1, I still have that increase of 1, increase of 1, increase of 1, and now I have my 0. If I went back 1, just like this next value, I need to go back the same amount as this value. So I need to go back 2 for my y. If I go back 2 from 6, I'm at 4. So now I check myself with my table. I'm going to create my new table with my x and y. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I have 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Now I'm going to make sure that my rate of change is, is correct. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. And I still have a correct rate of change because my y over x ratio is the same for every single point. But now my table includes when x equals 0, which is what I wanted. So I look for when x equals 0, what is my y? My y is 4, so my y-intercept is 4. So now I have my y-intercept even though my original table didn't have when x equals 0. I extended my table to find my y-intercept. Now here I have another example of a table where I don't have a value for when x equals 0. So right now I don't know what my y-intercept is, but I'm going to extend my table to include when x equals 0. So first, once again, I'm going to find my rate of change by finding my change in y's and my change in x's. So my change in y from 5 to 9 is an increase of 4. 9 to 11 is an increase of 2. 11 to 13 is an increase of 2. 13 to 15 is an increase of 2. I need to look at my increase in x from 2 to 4 is 2. 4 to 5 is 1. 5 to 6 is 1. And 6 to 7 is 1. Now if I look at my rate of change for each part on the table, I need to make sure I have the same rate of change everywhere because these all look like different numbers. So for the first two numbers, my rate of change, my change in y over change in x is 4 over 2 and that reduces to 2 over 1. My rate of change for my next two is 2 over 1 and then I have 2 over 1 and 2 over 1. So it looks like throughout I have a rate of change of 2 over 1. So that's good. I have a constant rate of change or I have a slope now I just need to figure out when x is 0. So I'm going to look at this point that I have up here. I'm at 2, and I need to figure out how many do I need to go backwards to be at 0. If I went backwards to get 0, I would have to go back 2. So if I, if I change by 2 on my x's, that would be just like this point. When I changed by 2 on my x's, I had to change by 4 on my y's. Now going this direction, it would have to be an increase of 4. So going this direction, I'm going to have to take away 4. So from 5, I'm going to take away 4 and I'm going to be at 
1. And I'm going to check myself with a little table over here. I'm just going to maybe try out three, three of the values. I now have that when x is 0, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 5. And when x is 7, y is 15. Okay, this is an increase of 2. This is an increase of 5. This is an increase of 4. This is an increase of 10. So let's make sure my y over x's all go to 2 over 1, like they did before. So 4 over 2. That's 2 over 1. And 10 over 5. Okay, so I still have the same rate of change, but now I know that when x is 0, y is 1. So my y-intercept equals 1. Now that I know my slope and y-intercept, I'm just going to go ahead and create the equation. So I'm going to put my slope in right next to that x, being multiplied by the x. My slope was 2 over 1 which is 2, and my y-intercept was 1. So if, I rewrote, so if I rewrote the equation, it would be y equals 2x plus 1.